Hallo und herzlich willkommen zu einer neuen Folge von Radikal Glücklich, deinem Podcast für ein strahlendes, gut gelauntes Leben. Hier ist Silja, Folge 124, Moni McFadden on Loosening the Grip, also den Griff lösen. Wie können wir Kontrolle abgeben, freier werden? Wir sprechen über Kunst und Yoga und ich werde jetzt noch, bevor ich starte, gleich ein paar englische Worte sagen und dann ist auch das Interview auf Englisch. Wir reden ziemlich langsam, ich finde, man kann es gut verstehen. Versucht trotzdem zuzuhören. Es ist so ein tolles Gespräch geworden. Die Frau, die heute im Podcast ist, ist eine meiner amerikanischen Gastschwestern. Ich kenne sie also seit ich 16 bin. Und sie hat einen ganz spannenden Weg hinter sich, ist heute Yogalehrerin und Künstlerin, hat mit über 50 ihre Yogalehrerausbildung gemacht. Und so weise Worte sagt sie. Und es macht so viel Spaß. Ich habe mich so gut gefühlt nach diesem Gespräch und ich hoffe, es geht dir genauso. Und ähm hab einfach Spaß und solltest du Lust kriegen, Yoga zu üben, dann denk dran, dass unsere Yogalehrerausbildung im August startet mit Vanessa und mir und ich pack den Link dazu auch in die Show Notes. Okay, this is the introduction to a very special podcast for me. It's Moni McFadden, my dear American sister, one of my dearest American sisters. And we talk about art and yoga and how to loosen the grip which is a metaphor, maybe, <laughs> I can call it, my English is a little bit rusty, please excuse me, um, a metaphor on taking, letting go of things, letting go of attachments and taking life as a gift, which we can choose to see that way each day. And Moni says a lot of wise and wonderful things, and I enjoyed our talk a lot. I can... I will put all the links which she mentioned to her work, to her Instagram, to the Etsy shop we talk about in the end. And of course, too, to um, the great program she um, did this year, she's still doing this year on art. And you can find all this in the show notes and in the blog post, um, which will accompany this podcast episode. So now have fun with Moni and our a little talk and loosen the grip. It fits good. I am really excited and happy that you take you, that you are taking your time to talk with me about art and aging and how art has developed for you, Moni. And as I said in the introduction, you are my American sister, one of my American sisters. Um, so it's great to connect on my podcast with you. I'm really proud. And I, I'm so happy to be here. Thank you so much for inviting me. Happy to be here and to share any information with That's you. Good. So we are sharing um, our love for yoga. Maybe we will be on that topic too um, today, but I would love to start talking about art with you because I know that art has always been a part of your life. Yes. And it has developed over the times and it has taken bigger time or less time. And so maybe you want just kind of give us an overview about how, what art is for you and why it's in your life and how it has developed. Sure. And, and I think that actually yoga in a, in a strange, but interesting way has kind of been a part of that because yoga is really what encouraged me, I guess, or taught me to be a little more in the present moment um, and take advantage of what is happening in the present moment. And for me, um, art has been a big part of that. So they're, they're a little bit interconnected, I guess, in that way. Um, but yeah, I always, you know, I always loved art as a, a little girl and, you know, art class was my favorite and I was always doing um, crafts and projects for like the family, you know, homemade cards and homemade gifts. And um, I would even say that, you know, as I entered college, like that was sort of my direction, right, was art and drama. But um, at that time, which was, you know, the late 80s, uh, early 90s, um, the encouragement was more for 
you know, you need to get a job that's going to make some money <laughs> and go a different direction. And so I, so, I did, <laughs> so I did that. And I was a journalist for a while. And I, I eventually became a, an English as a second language teacher. And that was, that has been my main job, I guess, as an adult, but, but art has always been a part of my life. And I really got into watercolor art after I took a class in the year 2000, um, from a dear friend who is still a dear friend. And um, it sort of took off and I just really um, loved watercolor and loved the way that I could get so lost in a project. And and I would say that um, that peacefulness, that just being able to be in that present moment, it, art is the one thing that that, aside from yoga, that does that for me, that I can be in a room for two to three hours and just be doing that and thinking about that and just be completely, um, I guess, happy, I don't know, blissful or, or just, uh, really content. Um, but what has really changed for me, I think over the last few years is that since I have a little more time now is that art has become more, I was really intent on, on selling you know, initially, like I have to make money from this and I have to, this has to be productive. So I made the website and I made the prints and the business cards and it just didn't really, I don't really have a business side to myself. Um, and I think what happened is I finally accepted that and just decided that for me, where I am in my life right now, doing art for art's sake, uh, just to have that creative outlet has just been really powerful for me and really, um, meaningful. So um, so I, I, this year I took a class called let's face it 2021 and it's an online class and it's a year long. Um, every week there is a video tutorial of a portrait and I have learned so much. Um, I got out of my, just, I've been in watercolor, watercolor only. Um, and I have been using every different kind of medium for this class, um, and have just been having so much fun. And just learning a ton about um, different different types of pencils and paints and chalks and um, surfaces and techniques. Um, and so it has been a very just uh, empowering experience for me. And I, I just is something that I can just say, I just love this class and I look forward to it every week. So that's that's cool. And it has meant many details in it which um i would like to um point on and talk about okay. the first is the commitment to do a class that is a year long yeah yeah that's, that's a big commitment <laughs> which a lot of yeah. people would maybe fear yeah to say so, well i don't know what in summer is and i don't know if i can do that and so we kind of back up even if we think it will do us good Yeah. So I guess uh, I'll start by saying I was inspired by a friend, It's kind of a new friend. It's actually a friend of my husband's from childhood, but um, I just recently met her. We have cabins together in the same area and there, she has a sister and they grew up with my husband and she's retired and she, we connected last summer and realized we have this shared interest of art. And she suggested this class to me as she's taken it before she's taking it again. Um, the thing that really drew me in too was, you know, the price was actually pretty low for the class for a year long class, $150 for the whole year. Uh, the yeah, the materials are, are, can get expensive, but um, you are also encouraged to use what you have. So that has been really good for me because I, you know, I tend to be a little, I don't know how to describe it, but a little tighter in my art. Like what my goal is to become looser, to become a little more into some abstract impressionism and to be open to using a different supply than is suggested. And that gives a little more freedom of what you actually can create. So I'm working on that. That's been a hard thing for me. Um, but she is the one, her name's Jennifer and she suggested the class to me. And so we share, like when we create something, we'll text back and forth or we'll share and all the, uh, when you do the class, you know, there's people all over the world taking a class and we share it on a Facebook album. And so you can see everyone's interpretation of this 
project. And for example, the first week, I think there were over 300 people who posted and it is just incredible. Um, you know, from a very beginning artist to an expert artist, what you'll see and all of the different interpretations of the lesson. Um, and, and I will admit that I've missed a couple of weeks now. I've gotten a little busier this spring um, with some other projects. And um, so I have committed to myself to, you know, just set some time aside to catch up because I really want to make sure that I at least attempt every week's project um, just for the experience. So yeah, it, it is kind of a commitment. But the other thing is, you know, you can do it anytime. The lesson is released Monday morning. It's usually anywhere from a half an hour to, there are some that have multiple videos that add up to two or three hours and the project could take eight or 10 hours. So it's all on your own time, right? So you can, you can do it whenever you want. You don't have to do it. Oh, it's a Monday morning class at nine o'clock. You can do it anytime during the week. So that's that's really great. Yeah. And they don't expire. So you can go back. Like I missed a class three weeks ago. And so I can go back and redo that class. That's cool. So yeah. you said that there was one goal in you wanting to um, loosen the grip a little. Yeah. On on your um, favorite materials and favorite techniques, which yeah. I would like for people who are not so much into art would like translate into that we all have a grip on the things we think how it's been done. We yeah. all like to do it our way. <laughs> Yeah. That's when you like it's a dishwasher when there's um was a couple and everybody puts the things in the dishwasher and there's one who puts it in and there's others who like to change it the way somebody else put it in which is me. Are you thinking about mom right now? <laughs> no, it's me. I'm I'm redoing the and dishwasher. Mom. I'm redoing the dishwasher. It's like it's a terrible habit. But because I cannot it's kind of like a um, the need of being in control and yes. plus the need of thinking it has been to be done good in a good yeah. way. It's ha- it yeah. has to be done right. So right. losing the grip and techniques uh, makes um, higher the risk for failure. So um, how was that for you? Um, so okay. so it's funny when you first started this last you know little conversation here. I, that, that's the first word that came to my mind was control. Um, and I think that being, feeling out of control is a scary feeling for us. Like we want to be in control of, of what we're doing and, and what we're producing and what we're putting out there. And yeah, we can think of it literally like, you know, I want the dishwasher this certain way and I'm going to fix it. So it feels right. Right. Um, but, and I, and I think for me that control you know, came in on that whole like attachment to, and that's where the yoga comes in too, right? Is that attachment to, if I'm going to do art, I'm going to have to do something with it. I'm going to have to sell it. I'm going to have to be productive in that way. Um, but I it think it has to that, be beautiful. Mine is, it has to be yeah, beautiful. If I it has paint, to be, it has to be right. beautiful. It has to be right. the best. So I've, I've, right. I haven't painted a long time because I always feel while doing it that I'm not good enough. Yeah. And, and, you know, some of these projects I do and, and I think, oh gosh, that that looks absolutely terrible. And, and sometimes it does, you know, it's like, it's not always (laughs) going to be, you know, um, something that you would display. Now in this class, I have made things that I've framed and I've made things that I've thrown away. Um, and, and I think it's just getting to that point where it's like, that's okay. Like that's part of our, that's part of the process, right? Like when we do something in life, like sometimes it's something that we keep and sometimes it's something that we let go of. And I think for me, like when you talk about that tightness, like that can be like literally like I'm holding the brush too tightly. I need to loosen my grip, but it's also figuratively like I need to be able to let go a little bit and just do this for the sake of I'm spending two hours today doing something that I absolutely am completely passionate about and it's not making me a dime and and that's okay like that's that's what the balance of life is all about like our life cannot just be I'm going to go out and work for 12 hours and make my money 
And then I'm going to come home and eat dinner and go to bed and do it all over again. Because I think that's where our mental health issues really start building up is when we don't look at ourselves as a whole person who needs to have, you know, work and play and creativity and exercise and good food and good relationships, right? It's all part of this big ball of stuff that we need for lack of a better way to describe it. It's just, um, yeah. And, and I think that, that there, you know, people will say there's an artist inside every one of us. And it's like, I believe that's true. It doesn't necessarily mean that you're a painter or somebody who draws well or makes a piece of art, but I mean, there's art in cooking, there's art in exercising, there's art in planning, there's art in, in everything that, that we do and creativity, even in, in a person's work. Um, and so I just, I think that giving that a little space to grow is a really good way to find that more sense of balance within ourselves. That is so true and so wise. And I would love to frame it that everything, that there's art in everything we do. I um, have to think about an interview I did with um, beautiful Elena Brower, who's an American um, yoga teacher. Mm-hmm. And she was on the podcast and she says, uh, we all need to see um, our work as our art. And we, That's need, right. we, need to, we need to schedule our work like it is. it would be a piece of art, like we right. have to orchestrate every day. Um, so yeah. there's a, the whole comes together, like you said it. So it's. Yeah. It's and I think really like I think about there. I think about our sisters, right, Chris and Jenny. And, you know, Chris is an attorney and Jenny is a special ed teacher. Right. And and they'll both, you know say, oh, you know, I'm not artistic. I'm not artistic. But like, I look at both of them and I just think, gosh, you know, I mean, Chris, with what she did in her career as an attorney, you know, that is something that I I could never do. I mean, there's an art form to the way that she thinks and the way that she has, you know, moved through her career, the things that she's done. And then Jenny, I mean, Jenny has been faced with students of so many different needs. And she has had to be extremely creative in how to reach those students, right? So you have to be able to think creatively, you know, no matter what you do. And um, that that is an art form in itself. So art is not just you know, putting the pen to the paper or the paint to the palette, or, um, I think that there's, there's other ways of being creative, um, to find, to find that balance in your life. Yes, I think so too. And I think that's, um, that we all have the need in us, the drive to make things, the world a better place to make things beautifully in our way, which doesn't mean that we need the, the control, <laughs> The takeover, yeah. and it doesn't, and it needs to, and that's where the aging comes in. Where I want to um, talk to you, on which I want to talk to you. Well, my English is kind of rusty. <laughs> Never mind. You understand <laughs> me. Good. But what what I want to say is that I think that um, in my twenties and thirties, there was a lot to do because children were young and a lot to achieve, and I wanted to yeah. make a career and a corporate job, and yeah. There was a lot of hustling, hustling hard, which is kind of the culture in which we live in our countries. And then they came kind of like a change in the 40s and a total change um, in the end of the 40s, turning into the 50s, um, about freeing how to use my time and how can I free myself from um, expectations which I have on outcomes or um, on good or bad, um, on judgments. Um, and what makes me happy or content, as you said. So yeah. um, I would love to hear your thoughts on that. Well, I, I think, you know, I look back on that too. And I mean, I have the same experience of, you know, being busy with work and raising children. And I think that as women, particularly, there is a lot of pressure and there's a lot of judgment, right? So So we expect ourselves and I think we feel that other people expect us to not only 
you know, raise the kids and, and run that house and get all of the things done that, that are required for that, but also to, you know, be productive as a worker in, in society. Right. And, and it's a lot, it's a lot. And I'm not saying that it can't be done. It can, and it is done. Um, and it's often done with grace, you know, but, uh, I think, I, I think that it's okay to decide for yourself. Like for me, I had to decide for me what works for me, right? Like what, how can I do this so that, so that I can not just be productive and happy, but also be, um, uh, you know, a, a strong contributor to my family, to the people around me. Um, and so that I'm not just killing myself at the end of the day, you know, trying to do it all, which is, I think what we tend to do, right. Is we tend to try and like do it all. And we have that. And that comes back to that attachment too, right. We have that attachment to, um, what others think of us and how, what, you know, how we will be judged if we stay home or if we go to work or if we put our kids in daycare. Right. And it's like, I just think that is so important to try to let go of that just a little bit and worry really only about what works for you and for your family. Right. How, how can you make this be a positive experience for your own family without worrying about what does this person think or what will, society think, or what will my family think? I mean, I can't tell you how many times I was asked, when are you going back to work full time? (laughs) And the thing is I did, I mean, I raised a family and I worked three or four part-time jobs so that I could be home before and after school. So I worked my tail off. I, I really did. Um, and I think, um, yeah, it's just, it's super important to just come back to that, um, sort of worry about yourself, you know, (laughs) a friend once told me, um, it's, it's none of your business, what anybody else thinks of you, you know, it's none of your business, what anybody else thinks of you. And that has always stuck with me because really, you know what, that is none of my business. It's, it's really not. I, I only need to worry about, you know, what is, what is working well here? How can I make um, this life productive for myself and for those around me, um, so that I can have that balance. I don't know if I got off your topic, but (laughs) (laughs) that's okay. That's okay. I feel, um, that too, that we, that we need to find our own way on like life is an art. One of, one of my friends used to say, um, life is not a trial, right? You don't have a second chance, so you better do it your way. That's right. That's right. And we only, we get one chance, right? We get one chance at life and life is so, so short, you know, life is so fleeting and we don't know what is happening one day to the next. You know, I had a friend, um, this morning text me that her, her boyfriend, um, was hit by a drunk driver last night on his bicycle and he's in surgery this morning. And, and I just woke up to that text and I, you know, I think he's going to be okay. And he's, he's, um, his concussion was not severe. Um, he's having some knee surgery, but I just thought, you know, yesterday at this time, she did not have any idea that that was going to happen. Right. So, so I just think that, you know, you have to wake up every day. Every day is a gift and every day is an opportunity to make a difference, not just for yourself, but for other people around you. Um, in the way that you choose to live your life. And um, so, so yeah. And I just think, yeah, as we age, gosh, we, we kind of do need to let go a little bit of um, those expectations, those attachments, or we're just going to just drive ourselves into the ground with stress. Right. And stress is, stress is really so damaging to our entire system. I mean, not just our mental health, but our physical health. And so any way that we can relieve that, you know, through creativity, through exercise, through yoga, through whatever it is that we personally choose as a stress release is important on a daily basis. 
That is so true. Plus, um, I am reading a book about um, menopause right now to um, help some other woman with it. And it's um, that the stress hormones cause a lot of dysfunction in our hormone cycle. So we cannot get rid of excess estrogen. Estrogen. estrogen, yeah, estrogen, estrogen yeah. and um, that makes a, a, a lot of the imbalance um, we have when perimenopause or menopause hits us. Um, and um, when I think about interviews I did with uh, traditional Chinese mediciners or practitioners, they uh, always used to say that when we get older as women, we need to um, nurture our yin because our yin yeah. might deplete might might uh, might empty um, and we need our yin we need to restore it so we need to rest we need to do restorative things whatever that is which make us happy right um, i would love to hear from you because i think that's a problem i think most of us know that we know that in our brain we know okay sure. i need to pause i need to take good care of myself sure. but then comes the habit of being busy which gives us the illusion of control but you can always be hit by a car yeah so what is your recipe or what has been your recipe so you can choose now more freely to um, loosen your grip and let go? So, of it? yeah. So I was going to mention that um, when we were just talking about stress is I'm, I've been taking a yoga training with Gary Crafso, who um, has the American Vinny Yoga Institute. And the Vinny Yoga is what I did my 200 hour training in. And we were talking about stress and how, okay, everybody has stress, right? So there's external stress, which is like, oh, there was an earthquake or there's COVID or there's, you know, somebody passed away in your family. And, um, and then there's internal stress, right? There's stress that you internalize that you have for yourself. So it's not, it's not the stress that, that will get us. It's the, the way that we react to stress, right? So like if we choose, to react really emotionally or to, to melt down or to, you know, to freak out, so to speak, um, then that will actually make it a lot worse. Um, and so it's, it's being, being conscious of, um, how you react to those situations. Um, and so, so anyway, that I just wanted to mention that, but your question was, what, what is your recipe? What is your... How did you learn that? Because I think yeah. we all want to react differently, right? But we kind of get so, caught in, in our drama. Yeah, and I and I know that you know some people will think this sounds a little cliche, um, but for me, like I think the yoga is really what was a turning point for me in how I handled my stress because I think back to myself as a young mother. And in my thirties and even in my forties of just feeling really stressed out, right. And just being really anxious and your, your upper body gets tight and your, your belly gets tight and you're just like, you have this like fight or flight. Right. But I think that that yoga and, and being able to come back into your, into your breath, which is your home base, it's your anchor. It's, it's something that is yours that you can control that you always have, um, is, has been a really powerful tool for me. And it took me, you know, a couple years, maybe more to have that really transfer into life situations. Right. So it's like, yeah, I can do a yoga class. And at the end I'm really relaxed and in Shavasana, I feel great, but then I get off the mat and I'm right back to my stress. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, we've all been there. Right. But um, but I think that, that, you know, at the end of my classes, I say, um, you know, may this practice benefit, not just ourselves, but all beings everywhere. So can we carry this off and share this feeling out into the world and how we treat people, how we handle situations? Um, and so for, for me personally, it has been, um, being able to really internalize that so that it's really more automatic for me. For example, I have a huge fear of heights and on my backpacking trip this weekend, like before I crossed this very tall, very narrow <laughs> bridge over a, a rushing river, you know, I did, I took some really deep breaths and I just went and, you know, felt really good to be able to do that and to just 
to sort of relax just a little bit before and, and to not think about it all the way up the trail, right. To not just obsess and just be like, I can't do it. It's going to be too hard. I'm really scared. I'm just coming back into just a little bit of calm, you know, within myself. Um, so but it, but it is, it's not, it's, it's a lot easier said than done. Right. Like I, I do get stressed out. We all do, you know, we all have those times, but I think it's, it's being able to come back and reset yourself, remind yourself, you know, of how you might handle something differently. That is so true. I think that's so true. And I think it's um, a reminding that needs to be with us probably our whole life because our whole life. because life is, life challenges us and we um, we step back into old habit of um, making a drama of something um, if there's a real drama um, making it last longer so when we talk about it all the time and all that all those little habits we have yeah but breathing has been a big part for me too and I think it's um, also the what I hear from your words is to the essence that if we learn to help ourselves with a deep breath and with a more conscious way of um, handling things, we can also be more helpful to others because um, like this cliche saying, you can't pour from an empty cup. I think that's yeah. true. Too. Yeah. And, and, and nice even person. just, you know, Yeah. In, in this situation today where I have this friend here, you know, and she's in my town and she's, she's sitting by the bedside of her boyfriend or she's at the hotel, you know, waiting to hear about, you know, his surgery. And, and it's like, you know, the best thing that I can do, um, for her, you know, because she's probably not able to take a deep breath right now is to, to do that and to ask of her, what do you need, you know, from me what do you need from other people right now? So that, so that in those times where there's other people that need us more, right. Because there, there are those times that we're able to, if we can take care of ourselves, then we're able to take care of those people in those moments where they're going to need it the most. And you know what? She'll return the favor. I know she will. She already has, you know, we've already, we've been through so much, um, together as friends, we've been friends for over 20 years. Um, And so, so that's the beauty of, of friendship, right. And of, of life. And I think that because our world is the way it is today, which is pretty <laughs> intense, like we live in a really intense time of a lot of strife and a lot of, uh, discomfort. And, um, there's so many, like you think about the stressful situations all over the world right now, really, I mean, India, the middle East, everywhere, um, the only way that we're going to be able to move forward is to be a little more open and, and giving of ourselves, um, to help each other. You know, we cannot just be in this life for ourselves. We cannot just be selfish people. You can be selfish sometimes, but I think that being selfless is going to be the way that we find a little more Uh, peace in in our world, a little more accepting um, of the differences of others, and so yeah. So if you can if you can take care of yourself um, in that way, then then you're going to be much more productive and being able to take care of other people. That is true. That is so true. So let's um, go from friends. I don't know if I answered your question. Oh yeah, you, you did. I think so too. Or okay. maybe I forgot what I wanted to hear. <laughs> Might be too, but I like yeah. your answer anyway. So that's okay. fine. <laughs> so um, from breathing, deep breath and yoga, you have a yogic um, journey. You are on coming back to art and playing with art and things. Do you, feel that the work in this year in this class makes you um, more flexible in other parts of your life too can you feel an yes. effect I do I do I really I really felt a shift um, as I started to create and create some some new things that I've never made before um, and yeah I felt a really interesting shift within myself um, 
just in terms of not just, like you said, not just the art, but just in that ability to just be a little more open, a little more loose, a little less expecting of myself, right? For uh, an actual product, right? Like I'm doing this because, and I think that when you do something because you love it, because you enjoy it, you are going to be a little bit happier as a person, (laughs) you know, because, because you're, you're giving that gift to yourself, right? Like if you keep those gifts away from yourself and you're like, you know what, I'm too busy. I'm not going to exercise. I'm not going to do anything fun. I'm just going to, you know, put my head down and, um, just nose to the grindstone. Then that will, that will show, right? What does that mean? Nose to the grindstone. um, Putting your nose to the grindstone means just like putting your head down and not lifting it up and just like working, working, working. And the thing is, I mean, let's be realistic. People have to work. People have to make money. That's you know, money makes the world go round. We live in a capitalist society, so we we have to pay the bills, right? And and so I'm not I'm not advocating for not doing that, right? And I have always been very creative in the ways that I make money. <laughs> in fact, so I don't know if I told you this, but I just finished about 50 hours of painting the walls at my yoga studio, um, which is just, that is so just reopened, right? And so it's like I never thought that I'd be like. But I've done so much interior painting in my life of our homes. We've had some rentals that I, I consider myself to be a little experienced in that area. Um, and, and so I found myself doing, doing this job, right? And um, so, so I've always been a little creative in, because I, I want to contribute, you know? I want to contribute to the, the money that, that we make as a family. And it's really important. I mean, it, you know, people, people have to pay their bills. so. Um, so I'm not, I'm not advocating for, for like, oh, just, you know, go and just be free and do what you want whenever you want. And don't worry about making money. That's not realistic. That's not what I'm saying. But I think carving out time, even if it's just an hour a day or a half hour or, you know, 15 minutes, something to add a little bit of balance, um, is, is so important. And, and loosening the grip, so to speak, right? Like, you know, when you think about that, I just, for me, when I think about that, I think about my hands so tightly around that paintbrush, you know, but it can be figurative too, right? Like let go, let go of your own expectations and just, um, it is, you know, my mom, our mom, your mom Mm. used to say, it is what it is. It is what it is. She was a Buddhist in the family. Right? It is what it is. Like there's some things that you can't change. And that's, that's just, it is what it is. You know? Yeah. I love um, the idea of to see what is. And I don't know if you know the book I have to think about. It's the four principles for highly productive people. It's called, I think. Uh Uh-huh. And it says um, there's, um, Whatever happens, you can put in one of two circles. The big one is everything that interests you because you will only it will only come to your mind when it it's interests you. It kind of like from what weather? Okay. What what's the weather today? So right. that's, that's we have an interest in how, to know what the weather is like. And right. then then there is a smaller um, circle in the middle of that. Those are the things where we can do something about. Yeah. So I cannot change the weather, but I can change what I wear when it's sure. Me. Sure. And um, that was for me so helpful to see what do I complain about or what does make me um, um, what does um, what doesn't fit in my life and how can I see what is what is from interest what what can what what can I not change oh, well, my English and yeah. but what other things I can do about it. There's yeah. always something you can do, but you can take a deep breath before you enter that bridge. Sure. If you have to cross it, but you can breathe. Right. You can, you can um, um, choose the state you are stepping on it. Yeah, exactly. And you can take your time. And that makes, that is what I feel conscious living is about, is about the freedom of choice that we create when there's a room before we react. That's right. And I think too, that like being deliberate, right. About what you choose to do is really important. I mean, 
we have all spent time with people or things that might be considered toxic towards us, right? And I think that it's it's really important. It comes back to, you know, you have a certain amount of time on this earth and who you spend your time with and what you spend your time doing is really important, right? So I'll just make a really simple example of like, I'm not going to sit around and watch um, a movie about something that is completely uninteresting to me just because maybe my husband wants to watch it, right? Um, I think, I think that our time and, and I'll give another example is I was a tutor. Okay. So for ESL and I had a what woman is, that, what is ESL? uh, English as a second language. So oh. I was volunteering and this, this person that I was matched up with, um, continued to, um, not show up regularly. And it was really frustrating for me because I had this time set aside every, every Monday for two hours and had it on my schedule. So I wouldn't schedule anything else. And then, you know, this, this would happen regularly. And so I finally said to my organization, you know, I am flexible. I have time to tutor, but my time is really valuable to me. Like I really, I'm choosing how to spend my time. So I don't think this match is going to work for me because if this person shows up every Monday, unless they're sick or unless I'm sick or there's an emergency, that that's that's different, right? But if this person just forgot or you know forgot to put it in their calendar or um, just repeatedly just could, couldn't make the commitment, um, I just said, you know, it's better for me. It's better for that person to probably find a different match because again, my time, I'm flexible, I'm open, I want to help, but my time is really valuable to me. So that's just an example, but I think we can be really deliberate about how we, how we spend our time and who we spend our time with. Um, and that those are important, you know, we have choices, right? We have choices, decisions that we make all day long, little ones, big ones. Um, and we, we have that control to be able to decide, you know, all of those little things throughout our day. And that's the beauty um, of being being in, in charge of your own life, right? Yeah, that's true. And whenever I feel, whenever we feel trapped, we need to um, see the whole picture and see what makes in us makes us feel trapped. So why yeah. do we think we do not have a choice because we always choose things. Even if I say I must go to work, we have chosen that work, right? that schedule. We have chosen that we um, st stood up at that time and that it's that we're in a hurry now. We, all, we choose all those little things. And if our right. choices don't fit to what, don't lead up to a life that feels good, there might be, it might be difficult to find a good solution or a yeah. new way of living that um, I think I'm still on it to create a life that matches all my needs and makes yeah. happy, which I think is a good goal. But um, to see it and to see that we are making the mess, not the people that are not showing up. It's us that we say, okay, right. I'll do it another mo Monday and I give it a chance another Monday and another Monday. Right, right. And it, it took... It, I have to say, um, it took me years to say things like, I don't want to watch that. I'm going yeah. to leave the room and I'm going to read a book now. Yeah. It's totally yeah. fine for me. But if you want to watch that, I'm not with it because I don't right. want to watch any uh, movies where people get killed and stuff. Yeah. I, I have bad dreams from all that. I can't do it anymore. <laughs> So yeah. when, it, when it comes to, I don't know, a thriller or um, something, the guys have to watch it on their own and it's fine. But it took me, it took me a time to have the courage to step out of the um, need to be together and to think I have to sacrifice. Right, exactly. For, for to be close to my people. Right, right. Yeah. And I mean, you're, you're a better person for yourself and for others, if you're listening to your own intuition, you know, and I mean, for me, I, I just, you know, I made a career change at age 50. I mean, I went from being an ESL teacher, you know, for almost 20 years to being a yoga teacher. And that was super scary, right? Because 
I was like, who's going to hire me? You know, I'm 50. I, I thought you uh, were talking about being a painter now. Yeah. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. <famous. laughs> Another career change. That's right. So, so it's, and, and I think one thing that's really hard for people is change is really hard, right? Change is hard because you don't really know when you, when you make a big change, like what's going to happen, like you have, there's some unpredictability there. Um, and so it it is a little scary. Um, but I also think that it's, it's really healthy to have change. Um, it kind of, you know, I'm, I'm a variety as a spice of life kind of person. So like, even when I was teaching English as a second language, I always loved like teaching different levels and teaching some adult basic education and some reading and writing and doing some different things within that because, because that kept it alive for me, you know, that kept it kind of spicy and kind of interesting. Um, and so I think with art, it's the same, right? I've discovered that in art, like all of these, there's like endless possibilities of what you can do as an artist. I mean, there's just an infinite number of things, um, and so that, that's the exciting part for me is like, there's so much to learn and so much out there and we're always learning. Like we, we never stop and, um, there's always something new that can be, can be learned in, in any arena really of life. I think so too. And I always love it. Um, here in, um, Germany, we, um, me and a friend, who was on the teacher training with me years ago, we now um, build our own, teach our own yoga teachers. Our own yes. Teachers. Yeah. And I'm always so excited. In every group, we have a woman which is even older than I am. Yeah. <laughs> oh, really? Because I, which is not typical, but I yes. find always that those women bring, like they are in there with all their wisdom and all their experience and they they decide to be a student again and that's such a gift it's it's a choice of okay i don't i'm not going to prove that i'm the best or um pretend that i know so yeah. i decide to be a student again and i think that was keeps us you said spicy i think that's what keeps us alive to keep on learning yeah. and to keep yeah. switching between being a teacher and being a student in every right. part of our life You know, and that, that's so true. And, you know, I, I am continuing with my yoga training and doing my 500 hour and I don't even know really, you know, my husband is a little older than I am and he'll retire earlier than me, which means that he'll be ready to be traveling and stuff. And, and so I don't know how long I'm going to be teaching yoga, but, and so at first I was like, Oh, you know, should I do the 500 hour? But really like, I love learning and I love learning about yoga and, and like art, there's an infinite number of things to learn about yoga. Right. And so many different types of trainings and like I'm doing yoga for cancer training, which has been amazing, uh, with Cheryl Fenner Brown. Um, and there's just so much opportunity there. Right. And so, yeah, I, I just think, you know, it doesn't matter how old we are. We, we can always learn. We can always absorb more and learn more about, about so many different things. And I think aging, you know, we have such a, again, our society is so harsh on people. It's like, come on, aging is a part, a natural part of life, right? Think about how much we love our parents, our grandparents, they're, they're our, our, um, our rocks, our anchors, and it's without them, you know, we wouldn't be who we are and we will be that for our children. And so it's super important to stay, you know, as vital and alive and learn as much as possible, um, for that next generation. And, you know, life is a cycle and it's, um, a beautiful cycle. And I think that every stage, you know, is, is to be enjoyed and to be, um, revered, you know, it's, it's not just, you know, yeah, it's being young, being youthful, that, that is a gift, but so is growing older, growing older is a gift, being able to be here and enjoy and, and, you know, enjoy your life as you get older and appreciate yourself and others is, is super important. Yes, and appreciate that you 
have learned to choose. Yeah. Because aging yeah. is about that freedom to, to choose and not to fit in all the time. To, yeah. To, to live our, our own way, I feel. Right. That was beautiful. I think that circle, life circle thing is a great um, yeah. last, last, last word thing. <laughs> and I think, I think for me too, I just, you know, again, we talk about choice. Like I'm choosing to look at it that way. I've had a lot of grief and loss in the last couple of years. As you know, wow. we've lost our parents. My, um, you know, our sister has uh, cancer. Um, it, <laughs> my friends, you know, have cancer. Um, cancer is so prevalent in our society. Um, and so there's, there's always that, that grief and that loss, but it's, um, I think it's important to remember that, you know, uh, life, life is, that is part of life. Like that is just part of our existence. It cannot be denied. It cannot be changed. It's just, it just is. And so how are we, while we are here, what are the choices that we're going to make and how are we going to live each day so that it is a benefit, not just to ourselves, but to other people around us. And what choices are we going to make to be productive and to find, to find that happiness and that inner, that inner joy. That's wonderful. Yeah. Well said, well said. So Moni, um, I will put in the show notes, um, your Instagram, um, art profile. If somebody has a question about anything you said, Sure. Um, I think they might uh, contact you and um, I will put the Etsy shop where uh, we find some of your um, pictures um, and other great stuff as well in the show notes. And I would love um, to um, have a last question on um, things that inspire you. So if there's a book you could recommend or something else which comes to your mind um, so that people can um, bathe more in those ideas you shared. Oh boy. <laughs> Is that Is something, something that, that comes to your mind that you would say, Oh, I love that book. And that really made something for me. The, um, the let's face program um, was a, was a big change. So I'm going to um, try to yeah. put the link into that. Too. Sure. I can send that to you as well. Um, yeah, it's called Let's Face It 2021. Um, com is, yeah. and I will send it that to me you. because I'm yeah, so that's bad been like you do. I think, you know, I, I find inspiration in, in those things and books and stuff, but I do also, I find so much inspiration um, in the people that I surround myself with. And it's not, you know, it's, it's my family and my friends and, and it's our, it's our children, right. Our, our kids. And I think that if we can live our lives in this way so that they are looking at us going, wow, like, I mean, getting older doesn't have to be a negative thing, right? Like, look at all the things that you can do, you know, as you grow older, um, then that's going to make them, you know, a, a more whole balanced person as well. And I just think sharing, sharing that with our, with our kids, with our young people in our lives is really important. Um, but I do, I draw a lot of inspiration from my girls. My girls are 20 and 23 and they oh are, oh yeah, the, well, they just, you know, they just are so, um, Oh, I don't even know how to describe it because I'm a mom, right? So, <laughs> um, but they provide me with a ton of inspiration, you know, and um, just in, in the things that they do and the choices that they make. And um, so, so yeah, but I'll, I'll think on that a little bit about if there are, have been any books, but, but yeah, that, that art class, um, that website and um Yeah. So thank you, Celia. 
Thank you, Moni, for taking your time. Thank you. You're for welcome. That there was so Thank much you. fun. That was so great. I appreciate it. Oh, me too. Me too. Me too. Okay. Thanks that you took your time and have a great day because it's in the evening here in Germany okay. and you just yeah. stopping. So. I'm just starting my day. So yeah, I will. I will have a great day and I'll talk to you soon. Okay. That's great. Thank you. Bye, Celia. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Hey und pst, es gibt einen neuen Podcast von mir, der ursprünglich auf einer von mir geschaffenen Kursplattform nur zur Verfügung gestellt wurde. Er heißt Zurück zur Natur und ich beschreibe darin, wie ich ätherische Öle und Supplements nutze und was ich den Leuten, die das mit mir entdecken, rate. Wenn du also Lust hast, auf diesem Weg auch mir ein bisschen zuzuhören, dann findest du Zurück zur Natur überall da, wo du auch diesen Podcast findest. Viel Spaß beim Zuhören.